Section 15 of the Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Larry Wilson. Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 1. Section 15. Lord's Day, 16. The Spirit of God attended our endeavors both in town and point. My heart was greatly enlarged in town especially. There is a very apparent alteration in this place. There is not so much drunkenness and neglect of the ordinances as in former times, and the people are much more inclined to attend the places of public worship. So that on the whole I entertain a lively hope that the Lord will yet raise up for himself a large society in the town of Baltimore on monday my frame was weak and weary nevertheless i had to preach once in town and once in the country about seven miles off wednesday nineteen having preached at several places in the country i returned to town and find that the lord assisteth me from time to time he frequently revives both body and soul when i am almost ready to give over tuesday twenty just before preaching at the point six men were accidentally shot in the militia exercise i will not venture to assert the captain collected them for exercise because it was preaching night however i visited one of the wounded and prayed with him saturday twenty two i dined with captain r who appeared to be under some small awakenings afterward came to town where brother r and i met like jacob and esau and all was love and peace in the evening mr r preached a good sermon on john twelve thirty six while ye have the light believe in the light that ye may be the children of the light lord's day twenty three our congregations were large amongst whom were mr g mr c and others in the evening mr r preached an alarming sermon on monday i visited a sick woman who soon after went into eternity and then i went to mr e s where many found it beneficial to them that they were present to hear the word of the lord by particular invitation i lodged on tuesday night at captain r s and in the course of a free conversation he told me that he was brought under his first conviction at mr t s from proverbs twenty eight thirteen saturday twenty nine i have not been unassisted in the public exercises of this week and now find my soul in a peaceful frame though not without a serious concern for the cause of the country lord turn aside thy displeasure and mercifully interpose lord's day thirty i preached three times and the cup of my blessing was full what shall i render unto the lord for all his benefits but we have alarming military accounts from boston new york and philadelphia surely the lord will overrule and make all these things subservient to the spiritual welfare of his church on monday i visited the country and having preached at a few places returned on tuesday night to town and found all the people all inflamed with a martial spirit thursday may four my soul longs for a perfect conformity to the image and will of god in all things i desire nothing but him and he causeth my heart to overflow with peaceful joy i preached at the point this evening but have more hope for the inhabitants of the town than for those of the point oh that i could learn the holy art of doing more good for precious souls it troubles me to think of being so unprofitable friday five at the appointed time for preaching we had an awful storm of thunder and lightning which killed three horses however i began in the midst of it and spoke with liberty of spirit and confidence in god saturday six I was grieved today that I did not feel myself more steadily devoted to God. In the evening, I, K., preached a good and profitable sermon, but long and loud enough. Lord's Day 7. I preached twice and held a love feast, but heaviness is brought upon my mind by some that would once, comparatively speaking, have plucked out their eyes and had given them to me. But now they slight me. Cursed is the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm whose heart departeth from the lord may my heart trust in the lord monday eight 
several friends set out in company with me to the quarterly meeting when we came to j g s he did not appear to be so open and free as he was about a year ago prayer is almost neglected and both his children and servants are almost like wild untaught indians ah what is all the substance of this world without the love and fear of god i proceeded the next morning to meet the preachers and stewards at ten o'clock we held our love feast though my mind was under some exercises so that i spoke but little however at four o'clock i preached from isaiah forty one thirteen with great enlargement and to a large concourse of people but was confined in the evening to the company of men who were destitute of religion and full of sin and politics my brethren and myself were glad to have prayer in the morning and leave them if there were no other hell than the company of wicked men i would say from such a hell good lord deliver me tuesday eleven was appointed as a general fast i preached on the occasion and the lord made it a solemn heart-affected time so that we did not conclude till about three o'clock the next day i reached bohemia but as it was late some of the congregation had departed i therefore exhorted those that were left and then proceeded to newcastle lord's day fourteen both last night and this day i hope my skirts were clear of the blood of the people in this little town whether they reject or accept an offered salvation after stopping to preach at chester the next day i then went on to philadelphia tuesday sixteen i had some friendly and close conversation with the preachers in which we spoke plainly of our experience and doctrines mr r a preached in the evening from wednesday till friday we spent in conference with great harmony and sweetness of temper if the lord spares me i am now about bending my course toward norfolk to preach the glad tidings of salvation to perishing sinners there monday twenty two i have preached the last evening with some sweet enlargement i left philadelphia this morning and set off for norfolk preached at night to a few people in chester and was conducted the next morning in a friend's chase to cecil court house where i embarked for norfolk monday twenty nine with a thankful heart i landed in norfolk after having been much tossed about by contrary winds in the bay my accommodations on board the vessel were also very indifferent so that it was a disagreeable and fatiguing passage but in hope of that immortal crown i now the cross sustain and gladly wander up and down and smile at toil and pain here i found about thirty persons in society after their manner but they had no regular class meetings however here are a few who are willing to observe all the rules of our society their present preaching house is an old shattered building which has formerly been a playhouse surely the lord will not always suffer his honor to be trampled in the dust no i entertain a hope that we shall have a house and a people in this town my heart is filled with holy thoughts and deeply engaged in the work of god on tuesday evening about one hundred and fifty souls attended to hear the word and about fifty at five o'clock on wednesday morning which by the presence of the lord was found to be a good time i then went over to portsmouth and found my spirit at liberty in preaching to a number of souls there friday june two the lord is pleased to show me the danger which a preacher is in of being lifted up by pride and falling into the condemnation of the devil how great is the danger of this a considerable degree of ballast is highly necessary to bear frequent and sudden puffs of applause lord fill me with genuine humility that the strongest gusts from satan or the world may never move me saturday three my body is weak but my soul is in sweet pacific frame i see the need of constant watchfulness and entire devotion to god my heart was stayed on god while preaching in the evening from psalm sixty eight eighteen lord's day four many seemed willing to hear both morning and evening at norfolk but in the afternoon at portsmouth the congregation though large seemed to have very little sensibility on monday i found myself better than could be expected after preaching three times and meeting the society the day before may the lord brace up my feeble frame and by his grace i am determined to use it for his glory and the service of his church 
the congregation were attentive in the evening while i enlarged on the fruits of the spirit tuesday six i went to the farthermost part of portsmouth parish through such a swamp as i never saw before and partook of a blessing with the people some of whom are of a simple heart after having preached at mr f s in st bride's parish then at mr m s and mr r s i returned to portsmouth on thursday evening and found my soul in peace i have lately read mason on self-knowledge this book with franks on the fear of man and thomas a kempis are most excellent books for a christian wednesday fourteen i have continued laboring with different degrees of encouragement between norfolk and portsmouth but have not met with the success which my soul longs for our friends set a subscription on foot to-day for building a house of worship and i have raised only about thirty-four pounds had they the same spirit of liberality which they have in baltimore they might easily accomplish it thursday fifteen i found thirteen serious souls in society about six miles from town on suffolk road but poor brother o is subject to great heaviness through manifold temptations the congregation here were small however some of them were much affected i gave a close and pointed exhortation in the evening at portsmouth and there was a melting of heart amongst the people i preached again the next day and met both the classes and felt my hopes for portsmouth begin to revive monday nineteen yesterday's labor of preaching three times etc was not too much for me and this day my soul enjoyed delightful communion with god satan assaults but he that is for me is stronger than he that is against me be thou my strength be thou my way protect me through my life's short day in all my acts may wisdom guide and keep me saviour near thy side tuesday i preached at new mail creek and joined two persons at through the small society there went thence to northwest woods and preached at the house of mr a and after preaching at two or three more places i returned on thursday to portsmouth monday twenty six the god of hope fills me with joy and peace in believing about seventy souls sat under the word this evening and some of them were very deeply affected but too often it is as the morning cloud and as the early dew how irrational it is that rational beings should employ their thoughts with readiness on every trifling subject but when they can hardly be brought to think seriously on the things of eternity although the holy spirit awakens their sensibility and alarms their fears oh the strange perverseness the deadly depravity of man tuesday twenty seven preached at five in the morning but am depressed in spirit to see such an insensibility to the things of god amongst the people surely i am now in a dry and barren land but hope it will not be so long tuesday twenty nine i preached at mr b s a new place and a large company was collected the lord stirred the hearts of the people under the preaching of the word at h s and on friday i returned and preached at night in portsmouth after i had met the classes and put them into bands the next day i then set off for craney island but found the weather excessively hot such as i had never known in england on my return some of the members appeared a little refractory in submitting to discipline but without discipline we should soon be as a rope of sand so that it must be enforced let who will be displeased lord's day july two our congregations consisted of many people from the country as well as the towns and i knew by experience that where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty monday three was spent in writing to the preachers and reading and i was much contracted in my ideas while preaching at night but all my soul is taken up with god so that my desire is unto the lord and the remembrance of his name give me thyself from every boast from every wish set free let all i am in thee be lost but give thyself to me friday seven the last three days i have labored at different places in the country and preached this evening in portsmouth though i feel some concern for the souls of my fellow men yet not enough if we could but see by faith the danger to which poor unpardoned sinners are continually exposed if we could but have a realizing view of that unquenchable fire 
into which they must be plunged dying in the present state how could we rest day or night from using all possible endeavors to prevent their eternal damnation oh unbelief thou most destructive sin how dost thou destroy the vigor of christians endeavors as well as the souls of the unregenerate tuesday eleven after preaching at five o'clock in norfolk i went to portsmouth met the classes and read and explained the rules telling them that every civil society has its proper rules and persons appointed to see them kept and that every member forfeited his right to membership if he willfully transgressed them if men see the necessity of being thus subject to order for the sake of temporary advantages how much more cheerfully should we be subject for the eternal advantages which attend the salvation of our souls friday fourteen i returned to town after a short tour and preaching several times in the country in this tour i lodged at the house of brother o mentioned some time ago a man of gloomy spirit but solid piety in his house there is a true spiritual church three souls all of one mind and sincerely intent on seeking and serving the lord i met the classes in town and found my soul sweetly staying on the lord though my animal spirits flagged by reason of the extreme heat friend l is opposed to our rules but no man can expect to abide with us unless he is so satisfied with our rules as to manifest a proper respect and conformity he may be as i hope he is a well-meaning man but he is deficient in religious judgment tuesday twenty i have now been a few days doing my master's business in the country but have taken cold and am afflicted with a severe headache so that i am almost ready to lie by however the next day i found myself something better and came to portsmouth met the classes and preached my heart and my flesh cry out for god fulfill fulfill my large desires large as infinity give give me all my soul requires all all that is in thee lord's day twenty three there appeared to be many wild people in the congregation though the grace of god is sufficient to make them tame but the almighty dealeth with man as with a rational creature therefore we may go on in our folly like the wild ass's colt till we drop into endless perdition unless we yield to the sacred touch of grace and become workers together with god wednesday twenty six i preached to a small company at brother w's and before the congregation was dismissed an honest christian who had been justified about twelve months before rose up and spoke a few broken words which affected the people more than all that had been said what an excellent thing is simplicity of the heart how ready is god to own and bless it it would be well for professors of some standing to inquire impartially if they have not lost their first simplicity old professors are very apt to become wise in their own esteem and fools in god's esteem i have constant inward fevers and drag a cumbersome body with me but my soul is united to jesus though i ardently wish to feel more fervent love to my god and saviour calling at brother o's in this little excursion i found his wife exceedingly happy in the love of god and i know not but she is sanctified wholly friday twenty eight at my return to town i found the people in some commotion their trading to the west indies was prohibited however the little society seemed determined to cleave to the lord the next day i went down the river to mr e s and preached perhaps to but little purpose to a company of ignorant careless people lord's day thirty i was greatly assisted in my public exercises both in norfolk and portsmouth if it were in my power and consistent with the will of god every soul of them should be brought to christ but alas these are vain thoughts for the almighty has an infinitely greater desire for their eternal welfare but the whole of the matter is this they will not come to christ in the way he has appointed that they might have life and thus many will eternally perish in their sins friday august four i spent the preceding part of this week preaching in the country as usual and with various prospects of success but came back to-day met the classes which appeared to be much more engaged for heaven and preached in the evening saturday five 
my spirit was a little dejected but blessed with the peace of god i had some conversation with mr s who said that the people should be kept in society if they did not meet in the class and intimated that instead of preaching the gospel i had been exposing their faults so this is part of what i have gained by my labor but i let him know that our rules were intended for use monday seven i received a letter from mr t r in which he informed me that himself mr r and mr d had consulted and deliberately concluded it would be best to return to england but i can by no means agree to leave such a field for gathering souls to christ as we have here in america it would be an eternal dishonor to the methodists that we should all leave three thousand souls who desired to commit themselves to our care neither is it the part of a good shepherd to leave his flock in time of danger therefore i am determined by the grace of god not to leave them let the consequence be what it may our friends here appeared to be distressed above measure at the thought of being forsaken by the preachers so i wrote my sentiments both to mr t r and mr g s tuesday eight i set out on my little country tour and after preaching at mr b s brother w s and a few other places returned on friday to portsmouth and preached in the evening though much indisposed this week we had such thunder and lightning as never i knew before thus by going from one climate to another we may meet with things of which we had very little idea then how will it be when we change worlds instead of climates and how surprised will impenitent sinners be when they go from earth to hell that god whose power produces the thunder and lightning of which the inhabitants of some parts of the earth have very little conception is undoubtedly able to produce the unquenchable fire of which many impenitent sinners have very little belief lord's day thirteen my own soul was enlarged in preaching but the people were too little affected on monday i spoke both morning and evening but we were interrupted by the clamor of arms and preparations of war my business is to be more intensely devoted to god then the rougher the way the shorter our stay the tempests that rise shall gloriously hurry our souls to the skies wednesday sixteen preaching at mr h s about sixteen miles from town i met with mr p from north carolina who invited me to go and form a circuit in currituck county where they have very little preaching but what they pay for at the rate of three pounds per sermon i accepted the invitation and appointed the tenth of september for the time to visit them a letter from brother g s which came to hand on friday gave an account of about two hundred souls brought to christ within the space of two months glory to god for the salvation of sinners surely i am in a dry and barren place and there is but little prospect of doing good though the spirit of holiness possesses my own heart but oh how it pants for more faith and love how it longs to be more useful in the church of christ saturday nineteen my body is weak but this does not concern me like the want of more grace my heart is too cool towards god i want it to feel like a holy flame i am also sometimes afraid that i shall never do any more good lord's day twenty i preached three times as usual and heard a sermon on the dignity of human nature vain philosophy every imagination of the thoughts of the heart in an unrenewed man is only evil continually then what is the dignity of depraved human nature received a letter from mr t r expressing a change in his intention of returning to england wrote to mr b s on tuesday where many of the people were much affected under preaching lord water the seed sown that sooner or later it may bring forth fruit to thy glory the weather is now so hot that my body is greatly enfeebled and my mind almost unfit for every exercise but i desire in patience to possess my soul i went to mr e s on saturday but there was little prospect of doing them any good i took my leave of them my body was fatigued my soul was tempted and cast down but in meeting the people at night in town my spirit was refreshed in the section fifteen.